Hello, my little squids. My name is Mina, and today we're going to be talking about Squid Game. So if you've been living under a rock, Squid Game is the new Netflix hyperfixation of the month. It came out in September, and I think has since surpassed like all the streaming records that Netflix had before. It's also a South Korean production. South Korea has been really killing it globally um, with film and TV. I really, really enjoyed the show. I thought it's probably one of the best shows I've watched in a while. Sorry, Emily in Paris. <laughs> I even like the show more than The Hunger Games, which I know it's been compared to because they're both survival games, but yeah, I thought it was better, but I think that's also because I was upset with Suzanne Collins and how she wrote that ending because hashtag galeness for life. <laughs> there will be spoilers in this video because we are going to be doing like a costume analysis, so I do have to talk about the plot. Uh, just keep that in mind. Okay, let's get into it. So the series protagonist is Sung Gi Hun, a deadbeat divorced dad with a ton of debt who lives with his mom. The Squid Game is a mysterious game show underground operation that promises the winner roughly 38 million USD. And Gi Hun's motivation to join it is to be a better father to his daughter and also to pay for his mother's life-saving surgery. The other main participants include the beautiful and resourceful Sebyuk, a North Korean defector who needs money to bring her mom over to Seoul and get her brother out of the orphanage. Ali, aka everyone's favorite, um, he's a Pakistani migrant worker whose boss has refused to give him his paycheck for the last six months. Song Wu, aka everyone's least favorite, a finance bro who's deeply in debt and put his own mother's business and house up as collateral unless he pays it. And O Il Nam, an old man dying of a brain tumor who has nothing else to do apparently. So the major twist at the very end of Squid Game is that Il Nam, who we thought had died in the game earlier, turns out to be still alive. Well, at least for the final episode. And dun dun dun, he is the creator of the entire game. Why? Because he was bored. I honestly was a little disappointed in the ending because I thought the reveal was kind of unnecessary. Like, I don't know, it just didn't hit hard for me because I feel like we already knew that whoever created this game was a rich person who was bored. Like, it was pretty evident from the VIP attitudes towards the game. They were really just watching these people kill each other as uh, a form of entertainment. So making the main antagonist be like this old man was like, okay, what's next? Like I didn't learn anything about how this show really started. Like I didn't learn anything about the guards and where they came from. I didn't learn anything about how they managed to keep it a secret despite the fact that every year hundreds of citizens are just dying. And how the front man was pulled into all this because he's a previous winner. So it's like, how did he get roped up from being a lower class person who just needed more money to literally orchestrating this game? There were so many questions I had and I was just so annoyed with Gihan and his insistence on the why did you do it question. We know why he did it. Ask for everything else. <laughs> and yes, I understand it's a good season one ending. I feel like it was really setting itself up for season two. But I also read from an interview that the director thought that the ending was satisfying enough to be like a series ending. He didn't write the show on the understanding that it would get a season two. So with that said, if the show didn't perform well, and if this was indeed a series finale, then it would have been a total dub for me. But I don't know, maybe that's just like my American side, just demanding answers for everything. But anyways, so the general theme of the show is a capitalist critique. It's about global capitalism wreaking havoc on the lower classes. All of the game's participants are in major debt and are willing to put their lives on the line to repay those debts. The guards are mysterious. We don't know their origin stories, but it seems like they're also slaves to capitalism. There are three tiers of guards, and we know at least that the lowest tier, the circle guards, live in prison-like cells and are forced to do the mundane labor of transporting the participants, preparing their food, and disposing of their dead bodies after each game. The upper class, aka the VIPs, are spectators who, much like the Roman and emperors of history would watch these lower class people fight to the death for their own entertainment. 
They treat the players like horses, placing bets on the player that they think will win. The interesting thing here is the global nature of capitalism because most of the VIPs are these dim-witted, obnoxious Americans. What convinced you to bet so much on number 69? Oh, it's uh, such a beautiful number, 69. <laughs> so that's the general gist of the show. For this video essay, um, I want to talk about how the costumes maintain the themes of the show. In an interview with Variety, director Huang Dong-hyuk said this about the creation of Squid Game. I freely admit that I've had great inspiration from Japanese comics and animation over the years. When I started, I was in financial straits myself and spent much time in cafes reading comics, including Battle Royale and Liar Game. I came to wonder how I'd feel if I took part in the games myself, but I found the games too complex and for my own work focused instead on using kids' games. As a survival game, it is entertainment and human drama. The games portrayed are extremely simple and easy to understand. That allows viewers to focus on the characters rather than being distracted by trying to interpret the rules. So it sounds like the choice of the games was to make it an easier uh, viewing experience for audiences. But I will say, whether intentional or not, the use of childhood games makes for an extremely unsettling environment. The first challenge is red light, green light. It's completely unassuming. We've all played the game before. We know how it works. And then bam, people start getting eliminated, eliminated. You don't just go to the sidelines and sit out. You're put into a casket and then cremated or your eyeballs get sold, whichever comes first. <laughs> the show makes us uncomfortable by distorting these pleasant sidewalk games that we associate with the innocence and simplicity of youth. Before we were aware how bad the world actually is, before we were put into this capitalist scheme of work, 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 before we were addicted to technological devices that are severely limiting our attention spans, before when we had imaginary friends to keep us company, not these FBI men listening in on our devices. The distortion also creates tension and anxiety for the viewer because I would say many of us probably have had really fond memories playing these games as children. So by turning them into these disturbing, dangerous life or death challenges, it's emotionally stripping these games from the safe and positive associations we have for them. The concept of presenting innocence as danger is also upheld and reinforced by the costumes. The players wear bright green tracksuits, not battle armor or recognizable prison uniforms. These tracksuits were also inspired by Huang's gym class uniforms when he was in school. The guards wear bright pink, an innocent looking color that contrasts with the brutalness of their jobs. It was all intentional. Huang said in an interview for Korean Netflix, let's make the color look very childish so it doesn't feel scary. The guards also have symbols on their masks, a circle, triangle, or square to denote rank, but these shapes also give off this PlayStation controller look, which adds to the general innocence and playfulness of their uniforms. Huang also said that he purposely chose two contrasting colors to make it seem like the guards and the players wore team uniforms. He also chose very vibrant colors to invoke childhood memories, like scenes from a day at the amusement park. Another thing about the colors, I have seen that TikTok that's been going around with this theory on the red, blue envelope thing. I think this is a fun idea, but it doesn't really hold up. The most glaring thing being that the uniforms are green and pink, not red and blue. Like, I feel if they were trying to go down this route, then everything, all the colors would be more uniform. <laughs> also, there would be less motivation to be enlisted as a guard because you don't have a chance of winning that cash prize at the end. Like the whole sales pitch is, would you like to play games for money? No, but I would like to play games for your hand in marriage, sir. I just think that the red and blue envelope is a reference to the Matrix's famous line, take the red or blue pill. It's not that much of a stretch because Huang said he was inspired by Star Wars when designing the front man's uniform. So if you're inspired by Star Wars, like you probably could have also been inspired by the Matrix. It, it makes sense, right? In the Matrix, the blue pill represents maintaining your ignorance and the red pill means you're up to learning the very unsettling truth. 
So Gihan taking the blue envelope at the beginning is him symbolically choosing to be a passive player in the system. When he dyes his hair red at the end, director Huang said it was because he wanted the hair to show Gihan's inner rage, but also it's him waking up and choosing to learn the truth. Also, if we take a look at the South Korean flag, you'll notice the circle in the middle, aka the Taeguk, is half red, half blue. The red represents yang and the blue represents yin. Yin is dark and negative in nature, yang is hot and positive. They represent opposite poles, not necessarily good versus bad because you need both for balance. But at the end, Gihan leaning towards the red, the yang, is him leaning into his active and forceful energy. According to Jennifer Craig in her book, Uniforms Exposed, uniforms have been an essential element of human society, especially where group identity has been crucial, as a mark of distinctiveness, as markers of social status, and as markers of group membership. Let's talk about the uniforms. So the two groups that wear uniforms are of course the players and the guards, green versus pink. Originally, Huang wanted the guards to wear Boy Scout uniforms, but he scrapped the idea because he thought the Boy Scout uniforms showed too much skin. He said, the guards have to cover their entire bodies and the best option to keep it a secret is a jumpsuit. The jumpsuit design was inspired by Korean factory worker uniforms and I think this is a very interesting choice. On one hand, work uniforms are worn for functional reasons. So for example, a construction worker wears a hard helmet to protect their heads. Uh, a doctor wears scrubs to protect themselves from bodily fluids. Craig also notes that uniforms designate status, competence, and hierarchy, and indicate the roles and attributes of the worker. So for instance, a nurse has historically dressed differently from a doctor to indicate that hierarchy um, and also the role differentiation. The fact that the guards in Squid Game wear factory worker inspired uniforms gives the cultural connotation that they are cogs in a machine. They are forced to do this unappealing labor because they are trapped in a system. While technically traditional military soldiers are also trapped in the system because we're all trapped in the system, um, the uniform of a military soldier is more intimidating in design and commands more respect in our society. I feel like if the guards wore military inspired uniforms, we would see them less as this group of people that is potentially also held captive by the squid game and more so as just ruthless killers who are in it for fun. As for the players uniforms, they're essentially like glorified prison uniforms. Every player is assigned a number and their names are not important. When a player dies, the player's number is announced over the loudspeaker, not their names. So even though their uniform is kind of fashionable, <laughs> uh, their clothes are used as a tool of control to erase individual identity. You don't need to know anything about the player to know that they're a player in the game just by visually looking at them. And yes, this is a form of control because if you see a player crawling around the vents or something like that, uh, you know they're not supposed to be there. Versus if they're dressed like a guard, they have more access to different areas. Even when the players are transported to the facility, they're all unconscious. And yes, I understand that the host wants to keep the location of the games a secret because it's all illegal. Um, the fact that the players are stripped and changed by other people bears a significant parallel to the way that incarcerated people are treated upon entering a prison. As Juliet Ash says in her book, Dressed Behind Bars, the stripping of prisoners on reception, the shaving of hair, bathing naked in front of prison officers and bodily inspections were designed in one form or another, both both to cleanse prisoners and to strip them of their identity. Clothes are not just clothes. We feel better or worse depending on the clothes that we are wearing. When it comes to prison uniforms, the clothing is often perceived as degrading and humiliating. As David Fathy, director of the ACLU National Prison Project says, I know prisoners care about their clothing. When it's stained or dirty or ill-fitting, which it often is, it causes them distress and is just another gratuitous humiliation and form of depersonalization that we inflict on prisoners while they struggle to retain some vestige of self-respect. Prisoners complain to me. It's notable. They hold up their clothing to me full of holes and tears and tell me they've asked for a new one but can't get one. This reminds me of the scene when Il Nam's dementia is getting worse and he urinates on himself and he's not given a change of clothes. He's just expected to keep playing the games while wearing soiled pants. At the same time, I don't think the tracksuits are entirely sinister because there's many types of uniforms and not all of them are bad. 
one good thing about the uniforms is that it promotes a sense of egalitarianism among all the players. Because I know that if it were me, I would show up to the Squid Game wearing like platform shoes or something and then just immediately <laughs> regret it once I was starting to play the games. Like the extra pounds on my soles would definitely make me crash through any kind of class. <laughs> the front man seems to be all about fairness, allegedly, because we all know he allowed Oh, Il Nam to cheat because why is that man still alive when he got eliminated? <laughs> but anyway, he's supposed to be all about fairness. That's why he kills the doctor and the guards involved in the underground organ stealing operation because he's miffed that the doctor has given hints on the next games. It's unfair. And so having all the characters wear the same exact uniform allows for a sense of fairness in the competition. According to Jasper Friedrich and Rachel Shanks in their article, The Prison of the Body, the idea that uniforms function to level the playing field between the haves and have-nots is a common theme across national contexts. And the wearing of uniforms is thought by some to induce positive social beliefs like respect for law and order. Finally, I want to talk about the masks. <laughs> Squid Game's art director, Che Kyung Sun, said that she was inspired by traditional Korean masks and fencing masks. Let's take a closer look. So as I said, the guards wear masks that have shapes on them. The more angles of the shape, the higher up the rank. So the lowest class, aka the working class, according to Che, is the circle. The middle class, aka the army class, is the triangle. And the highest, the managerial class, is the square. The front man has the most geometric mask of the people organizing the game. As I said before, it's inspired by Darth Vader. This is an interesting homage choice, and I guess it's impossible to tell right now because they haven't even written season two yet. But if the front man is a Vader type figure, then it may be possible that he can still be pulled over to the good side in the future. I am the brother. No! Then we have the host and the VIPs who wear extremely complex looking masks, very geometric and metallic and shaped like animal faces. They're kind of reflective and Screen Rant noted that they are reminiscent of expensive things like diamonds and chandeliers, designed to reflect the wealth and opulent lifestyles of the VIPs. Peter Muddick wrote about the theory behind the VIP mask for Screen Rant. He said, The masks that the VIPs wear could provide clues about their bigger roles in the Squid Game universe. For instance, in Korea, deer are historically considered to be divine animals that connect Earth shamans with the heavens, which infers that the wearer is a religious or spiritual leader. Meanwhile, the tiger mask could be a Siberian tiger, the national animal of South Korea, possibly representing a political leader or broker. And as the bull is a commonly used symbol in financial trading, the bull mask could represent a stock trader. Could be a reach, that's up to your interpretation. One thing's for sure is that masks embody the unknown and disguise the humanness of the wearer. According to this Lit Hub article, masking one's face is a way to avoid being remembered, a way to refuse giving information, a way to eschew connection. Masks give the wearer the one thing we don't want a killer to have, anonymity. If we can see his face, then there's a chance we can empathize with him, encourage empathy in return, perhaps talk him out of the whole thing. Benjamin Radford also wrote in his article, Why Hollywood Serial Slashers Wear Masks, Our brains are specialized for recognizing faces. Within seconds of seeing a person's face, we immediately know much about him or her, including gender, age, disability, race, etc., and can fairly accurately guess much more, economic status, emotional state, overall health, etc. Information is a form of power, and film directors want the victims, and therefore the audience, to feel powerless against the masked horrors of their films. Like in episode three, the one player who's about to get eliminated, who goes haywire and forces one of the guards to reveal his identity, his demeanor when he sees that guard's real face changes entirely because the guard is sexy. Sorry, young. <laughs> and rather than continue taking the offensive position, he decides to kill himself because it's almost like he's given up. He's lost hope in humanity seeing this very young man get pulled into this very sinister game. <laughs> Also, something you may not know, but in the 19th century, some incarcerated people were forced to wear these masks depending on the prison that they were sent to. According to Juliet Ash, the intention of the mask was that the prisoner could neither communicate with others nor be identified by others. Additionally, this garment was intentionally degrading in its obliteration of facial expression and in the discomfort of breathing through cloth. It was designed to be deliberate visual and bodily control of the prisoner as part of the surveillance culture of the model prison. If we take the stance that the guards are also somehow prisoners in this game, then this makes a lot of sense. 
Not only are they wearing these uniforms to intimidate the players, these uniforms are also designed to control them. Okay, that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. Um, let me know what you think about Squid Game, what your theories are for season two, how you felt about that twist at the end. I'm really curious. I really enjoyed the show. From looking at the numbers that it's doing, I guess a lot of people do as well. So yeah, I'm excited. And I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and a happy Halloween. I'll see you next time. Bye.